Hey guys, welcome to NitroRCX.com. Today we have the 8x8 Mad Torque Crawler in front of us and we're gonna convert it to eight wheel steering. So let's go over the parts and things you're gonna need to do the eight wheel steering conversion on this Mad Torque Crawler. The first thing is the GT3X radio. I chose this radio because it does have a built-in craw feature, perfect for uh, pre-mixed uh, programming on the transmitter so that you can turn on and off the rear wheel steer and have it mixed. Um, you can use other mixed radios or you can use the stock radio which requires a wire harness. I think we did that in the Max Stone. Check out that video for the four wheel steer on the Max Stone. But for this specific video, we're gonna use our newest and greatest GT3X radio. Other parts you're gonna need are the four wheel steering conversion parts. Uh, basically you need two of them because we got two axles that need steering servos. Um, part number MAD MT2091. We'll have a link below in the video to these parts. Um, you're going to need a Y harness. Any Y harness will do, uh, but this Y harness is also on the parts page for this Mad Torque 8x8. It's going to be MAD MT2090. Um, again, any Y harness will do, but if you need one, you can find it over at nitrorcx.com. All right, so let's go over the tools you're going to need to work on the truck to install the eight wheel steering. Um, I have a drill here just to make life easier. It's got a 2.0 millimeter hex bit on the tip of it. I also have a 2.0 millimeter hand tool um, just so I can tighten it and not strip out the plastic. Um, I have a 1.5 millimeter hex wrench as well. I have pliers that are gonna come in handy later. And I have scissors just to cut the zip ties. You'll probably also want some zip ties to get organized, organized the wires. So that covers the tools you're gonna need to work on the truck. Let's go ahead and get started on the truck. It's got four wheel steering as you can see right now. Pretty soon, once we're finished, it's gonna have eight wheel steering. So the cover's off. If you guys aren't familiar with RC, you might see a bunch of wires and be a little intimidated, but don't be intimidated. There's two ESCs that power all four axles. This ESC covers the back two. This ESC, electronic speed controller, covers the front two. They join to a Y harness into channel two on your receiver. Your steering servos, twin steering servos on the front, those come on this wire right here and they join to a Y harness into channel one. That's pretty much all the wiring. I did cut some of the zip ties so I can get them loose right here. Um, your motor wires are down here. We're not gonna be messing with those. Um, so let's go ahead and get to installing the two servos. I did have my GT3X pre-installed. The receiver's right in the center right here. If you're not sure how to install the GT3X, check out the GT3X video on the link below. Shows you how to bind and shows you some of the features on the GT3X radio. Let's go ahead and install the steering servo for the rear axle. Before we go ahead and take all the servo horns and the servo and all the steering parts out of the bag, let's go ahead and try to understand what we're trying to do here. Let's go ahead and look at the front axle here with the steering all installed. Um, the truck is on, or the truck's not on. Let me turn it on. This is what we're trying to accomplish. Notice the steering servos up here, the steering plates are already installed on the rear axles. You just need to install your servo and your steering linkages. Notice your steering servo sits on the steering servo plate. Servo arm steers these linkages and you have steering. These two steering linkages are moving these steering hubs, allowing your axle, allowing your steering hubs to steer. So let's take a look on the back of the axle and see what we need to remove. Notice we have the steering plate already installed. We have our steering hubs. We're missing the two rods, the servo, the servo horn, and that's pretty much the parts we need. When we install it, you can notice that these bars are actually holding these steering hubs or these hubs, these wheel hubs, rock solid to the axle. Now if we remove these uh, bars, if you will, remove these bars and we install our steering system, our wheels are starting to steer. So let's go ahead and do that. So I'm gonna go ahead and open the parts package. Okay, so these are the parts in the package. You'll notice these buckles are for the steering rods right here. This is the servo mount. You have your screws and bolts and washers, and you have servo horns. You're not gonna be using all these servo horns. Basically select the right servo horn for this servo. It's probably gonna be either a 25 or a 20. It's probably gonna be this F right here. Um, if you have a different servo, I like how they include uh, plenty of servo horns. If you have a different servo, you can mount those up as well. So I'm just going to move these servo um, horns to the side. These are the parts I'm going to use. If you forget what you're doing, go ahead and look at the front axle. It's very easy to just kind of copy what's going on in the front. So I'm going to go ahead and bolt these together and start mounting it. Go ahead and press these uh, 
bra these bushings into these end links. Pretty simple. Um, go ahead and do the same for the shorter end links. You don't really need a plier. You just press down on it. And then you're going to want to screw these uh, screws into these end links. As if you notice, there's going to be a 1.5 hex on the back. Go ahead and just get the thread started. This is where the drill really comes in handy. Let's grab the drill and screw it in. Do the same for the other four. All right, then you're going to want to screw these end leaks onto the aluminum rods. The long ones, of course, go onto the longer one. And if you forget, you can always reference your front steering links. This one goes on the rear. You want to do the same for this one? There's a flat spot on there if you want to grab it, get it tight. You do want to get it so that the flat sides are facing the bottom. Same for this one, make sure the flat sides are facing the bottom, that's where it sits. All right, so we got to remove this plate so we can get the servo bracket on there. All right, once I have those off, I'm going to get my servo, servo brackets on. Put the servo bracket back onto your axle. So go ahead and install your servo. It's going to go on these mounts right here. Use a washer. Just get one of them in so it holds it. You're going to want to remove the bars we mentioned earlier. Do the same for the other side. All right, get those parts out of the way. What we're doing now is we're going to remove this long bar. We're going to install this long bar over here. We're going to lock one side. Use a nut on the end of it. All right, so we're going to install the short arm on the side closer to the servo gear. Um, this screw, this bigger screw, is actually a 2.5. It's 2.5 mil. You want to put that through the short horn. You want to give it a spacer. After you give it a spacer, you want to put it through that and screw it through. All right, so now you have that on there. You just need to attach that steering linkage to your servo horn. Before you do that, you want to make sure that servo is centered, but just for now, we'll just put it on there. We may need to recenter this later, um, just so that steering servo is centered. But let's go ahead and just put it on there for now. I'm not even going to screw it in. I'm just going to bolt this to it and I'm going to want to use the bottom hole for, for more steering leverage put that through there put the nut on the other side all right when you're complete you put your screw in there and you're done four wheel steering so I'm going to go ahead and do the same thing I did here on the other side 
and we'll go from there. So before I work on this axle, I'm just gonna remove this kind of ESC plate right here so I get more access. I don't have to kind of be all up down here. So I'm gonna go ahead and unscrew that and give myself more room to work. Go ahead and unplug that. And at least that gives me a little bit more room to do what I gotta do. All right, so I have the rear, the second servo installed on the second axle, both servo installed. I don't have the servo horn screwed down yet because I do wanna get my servo centered. Go ahead and get your Y harness. Grab your Y harness. Plug it up. Now you're going to plug this into channel 3. If you're using the stock radio, you would be using another Y harness and harnessing it off of channel 1, which means you would have full time 8 row steering and you wouldn't be able to turn it on and off. That's the benefit of the GT3X radio. It has the crawl mixing feature. That way you can turn on and off the crawl feature. Let's go ahead and turn it on and give it a try. All right, so notice how my rear wheels jumped um, to the left. That's because my servo was not centered out of the bag. So I'm gonna go ahead and remove the servo horn, recenter the wheel. Now that I know the servos are centered, Okay, I'm happy with that. The rear wheels are centered. Go ahead and put the screws in for your servo horns. Okay, I have my servo horn screwed in. Transmitter on. I'm on crawl feature C on the dimension transmitter on the GT3X and we're getting opposite steering. I'll just take the load off the wheel so you can kind of see what it's doing. What that's gonna do is it's gonna give it much tighter turn radiuses. If you go to crawl feature D, if you go to crawl feature D, it's gonna go opposite directions. Um, you just kind of get kind of a crab walk. Um, and if you do crawl feature B, you're basically steering the rear wheels instead of the front wheels. Pretty cool, if you have a different transmitter, you can program your own. Um, mixing features for the crawler features, but that's how you do the four wheel steering. Pretty simple job. You kind of just mimic the front steering linkages. Um, you just got to get two servos or the four wheel steering or the eight wheel steering packages from Nitro RCX and it's a pretty simple job. We're going to go ahead and take it out for a spin. Uh, hopefully that gave you a better idea of how the eight wheel steering works. It's pretty similar to the four wheel steering. You just have to install another servo on the axle on the extra axle and include a Y harness. If you want more detailed specs and pictures on the crawler or of the parts, head on over to nitrorcx.com. We have plenty of crawlers from big to small, six wheels, eight wheels, four wheels. Go ahead and check those out at nitrorcx.com as well. Be sure to subscribe. If you like this video, click it below and we'll catch you guys next time.